Hello there, welcome to part four of the uh, little melody thing I've written for you. This one is going to be on the jazz, kind of ragtime swingy kind of thing. Um, so like with everyone, it's not the notes you play, it's the rhythm that you're portraying through the fingers, left hand and right hand. So in this one, I'm going to demonstrate the swing feel only using the left hand chords, which you can learn in part one. And I guess if you've been watching this, you probably know them quite well already. Um, they are here. <laughs> basically, but they're, they're explained in video one. So it goes like this, C. And then it would go on probably an E major there. So that's just a swing feel. Now you can break that down and just do only the bass note, but you're feeling the swing. You might put a metronome on and uh, you need to of course know the chords so you don't stumble. And you'll just try and play it with a kind of swing feel and two, three and four with that lilt. So um, it would go something like, uh, so, so starting on beat one. Bom, ba -dum, bom, bom. So I'm just playing it with a kind of swing and I'm feeling the rhythm coming from inside. So uh, if you just do that with the right hand only without the left hand, again, it's about feeling the rhythm, portraying it through the fingers. So imagine that there's a little ticker going. Little passing tone there. So I'm, I'm feeling it as if I can feel that kind of swing happening inside me. And then of course you'll try to put them together but in a very simple way first, just play the chords in a jabbing style. So again, it's about the fingers portraying the rhythm. That's literally all I can say about rhythm. Uh, you have to go and listen to a lot of jazz or bossa nova and feel the straight 4-4 four four of pop like in part two uh, to be able to do this kind of stuff. So um, uh, trying to put it, making it a bit more interesting, I might sort of play the melody with first of all octaves and put in some grace notes whenever I can, which is normally black to white sliding up using one same finger. You're not using it with two fingers, otherwise that's just two notes. You're doing it as if it's, well, it's actually known in, in written music as an accidental, because it sounds like you've accidentally played it. That's a nice way of thinking about it. So I'll just kind of do the left hand and you can watch and feel the rhythm with the emphasis on the right hand here. So, so here I did a little wobble on the octave. That's a nice thing to do. Another a nice thing to do is to double up on a, on a grace note. Another thing to do is to let the right hand join the left hand in playing a chord when it isn't doing anything, and that can happen here. So when, it, when I go to the A, I'm gonna, I can already feel, I've just done this little wobble, and I'm gonna go down to the C sharp, which is the third of A, to just kind of join in, I'm not gonna wobble it, just, just highlighting the notes, just to extend that left hand chord and add in a bit. I mean, I could add the whole chord if I wanted to, put the five and the G, which is the seven, if you wanna go that far. So that would sound like, Although it's actually there, I did two. I, I went down to the, C, to the C sharp and then, and then played the chord afterwards. So these kind of things are quite common in that, in that jazzy style. Sounds like you're playing lots of fancy things, but you're really just playing the same thing with both hands. So, let's try again. And even here, I can actually play the chord in the right hand with the melody note on the top and the bottom. playing the chord again, I've, I've discussed that <clears throat> discussed that in the other video on Bossa Nova, I think, you just play the the melody but then you put two notes of the chord in the middle of it and you just move it around as far as you can reach and then you just remove the notes in the middle when you can't reach anymore, so uh, A flat here I 
might go to the flat line here because it sounds nice. And now I'm going to do like a little chromatic run to the first note because the first note's E flat going up that F, A flat, C because I'm playing those notes are of course the notes of D flat major 9. Uh, and it's, I'm going to roll down them sort of chromatically to the E, well, I'm going to roll down to the E flat. Grace note though, and again I can do that as the chord. Uh, what's it you can just come down the chord like that completely using the notes of the actual chord with the melody on the outside. So I'll try and get into that. Um, I'll go from the beginning just so you can follow. Oh, here, here, here I did a little arpeggio of the chord. E, I'm doing here. I'm just playing the uh, diminished triad E, G, and B flat with an octave because I'm going up. But you could put the D on top if you want to do it as the chord with the D on top. But I'm doing it as an octave because that's the melody note. So it's just the octave, little finger lifts up, thumb continues. It's about the jump. So I did that one. And then I went down to doing that A, A thing, but it just happened an octave higher. See, these things happen naturally. minus seven I can put the seven and the B flat here and do that outside movement thing which is just really nice so this is a melody on the outside C D flat E flat and when we get to the E one I'm going to play the notes of E in the middle so we've got the melody on F B flat is the fifth of E flat D flat is the seven and it goes to the E and then it will continue once I think E it's going to go to E here. But notice how the chord is in the middle and I'm just moving around the outside, whatever the melody, it go all the way up here. It's a nice technical exercise to do anyway. You just take a triad anywhere, key of G, and you just keep the B and D in the middle, the three and five. It could be a minor, it could be a flat five, it could be a hold the minute, it could be anything. And you just see, you just get used to moving around as far as you can kind of naturally go. Because that happens a lot. It's a nice little exercise. It, I'll do it on a random chord, like uh, E flat minus seven. You could kind of still, you can just move the one finger around there, like the, the thumb. But I don't move these. I'm just playing the triad itself. I can move up. I can just about get the F there. The E, E flat's okay. D, D flat, down to the C. But you never move the three and five, whether they're minor, like this is, or regular five, or if it was a minor, if it was a, if it was a diminished triad same logic you just never move the two notes in the middle very nice technique and that's often what I do so I did that um, at the end exactly I did it on the, on the B flat so it's going uh so you're just keeping two notes in the middle it's quite a nice technique now if you want to make it sound a bit more jazzy and a bit more swingy uh, it, again it just comes down to feel it's never you have to remember this bit of wisdom it's never the notes that you're playing it's the rhythm that you're portraying through the fingers using those notes that's why you can just take any melody any famous melody and change it but it's about the it's the only thing that makes it a different style is not necessarily the techniques that you're using it's the rhythm that you're portraying um so let me just do it with a swing kind of feel and again i'm just jabbing the chord when you jab chords you don't often need to play all the notes you don't just do it in a very heavy way like this it's just a bit too heavy sometimes you're just kind of like just like you just like touch it like like the keys are really really hot and you just like just quickly want to touch just the C G and A and then the, the E and A and then the C and the G depending on how long the bar is you just kind of just touch just like that on, on the E flat minor on this on the E minor seven flat five you just kind of you just just touch the notes quickly um, of course it depends how long it is if you don't have much time you might just touch it once jab the same notes twice but you don't need to worry about playing all the notes because the musical context makes them sound logical so here I played an, an A7 chord but I put a 9 on it because I was I could I stopped myself but I was going to just touch on a flat 9 I'm just touching the notes um, let's do it from again 
I'm trying to do a, a, a fast kind of bebop thing, but slowly. Um, yeah. See, I'm just, I'm just jabbing it so lightly that you can't really hear it, but that's the whole point of doing that kind of style. Even if in my, in my demonstration song of um, Fly Me To The Moon, um, You just see, you see what I mean? You just, you just touch them, just lightly. See that one I'm playing, root, five, seven, octave. No, why not? Here I'm playing C, G, A. Next time I do it without thinking. See that time I just let, really just played C, E and A that time. I didn't play the G that time. It doesn't matter, you don't, you don't need to be so strict about it. I could have just played C and A. It's just what the left hand does in that kind of swingy, fast jazz stuff. You just don't think about it. And that's another thing that the right hand can do. You'll play the melody slightly distorted. I'm still playing the same notes, but if you just imagine that there's a fast rhythm going, you, I'm playing. I'm almost playing the melody in a different way every time. I'll do it another way. See, everyone is different. That's a nice exercise to do as well. You see, I'm playing it in all these different ways. Something to, to, to play around with. So just get used to playing that kind of thing, but it only works if you truly know the melody and you truly know the chord progression and of course the chords which are involved in it, otherwise you're gonna just stumble because you'll be worrying about what notes to play rather than how you play them and that's what all this is about um so hopefully you can take a lot of this stuff come with some of these ideas and you can explore them and expand them further and apply it to other repertoire which is the whole point of doing this um and uh, there you go hopefully you like this song as well and uh, i might try to extend it and i'll give you a little sneak preview i just kind of was just messing around with it uh, a couple of days ago and i just realized that there's one extra chord that kind of i was thinking where does that e major seven go at the end so we get to the end My kind of composition style means it goes from there, E flat, flat nine, to E major seven. And I was thinking, where can it go from there? And just the next chord when I was listening, because I compose in my mind and then I play it on the piano. And I could just hear that minor major seven sound. And then I heard that kind of sound, but as a whole diminished with a nine on top, which I like. I love that diminished nine sound, whole diminished with a nine on top. Uh, so I think it's going to keep keep on these notes here, and it's going to go. Something like that. I'm not quite sure of the rhythm of the style yet, because I've just written this as a melody and a chords, and I don't even know how I'm going to play it as a composition. But I might, once I refine it, I do really think it's going to go there. Uh, so it's going to go. something like that the little sneak preview but we'll see how it goes and i'll probably probably play it in a different way anyway it might be a bit more flowy a bit more um uh, and then go away somewhere so it's probably going to be a bit more flowy like that rather than that kind of swing jazz thing that we've been doing uh, so anyway, there you go, just a little sneak preview to see what comes next. Um, so there you go, hope it's been of use to you, as always. Likes, comments, subscriptions, always welcome. Have a look at my video management website, Waterpianism syllabus, perhaps Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.